Hello. So, I thought I'd come on and this is being filled on my phone, so I apologise. I'm also in pyjamas because we're currently in quarantine. Um, but I thought I'd come on and give an update as to how our IVF's been going. We had a... I think I left off on the last video that we were doing our first injection for our first transfer. Um, our transfer went ahead as normal. On the day we collected 10 eggs, no we collected 14 eggs. 10 eggs were mature and fertilized, all 10 fertilised. Um, we had a five day transfer and on the fifth day we had five eggs still growing. We transferred one but we were told on the day that they didn't think any were going to be good enough for freeze um, and that they were just good quality. So we left feeling a little bit well, especially me, left feeling a bit upset. Um, we didn't feel great about it. But we got a call the following day to say that two of them had picked up within the next few hours and we then had two little embryos in the freezer. So I was a lot happier then. Um, we went through our two week wait, but I started bleeding before even though two weeks was up. Um, I'd tested early and it was negative, but then I started bleeding I think three days before our official test day so I just knew that that cycle hadn't worked for us um so that was round one that was the one that we'd done the injections for in my previous video um, but I know it didn't work so we contacted our clinic and we arranged a follow-up consultation which was around a month afterwards I want to say so we went for that one. Obviously we had two in the freezer at this point, so we were like, we'll be doing a frozen embryo transfer. And went to our next follow-up and we spoke about, well, I'd asked if I could have more progesterone given to me. I was like, can I have more progesterone? And they were like, yep, that's fine. Because they say that progesterone, because you're on progesterone, it should hold your period at bay like you shouldn't bleed even if it's negative so we've actually doubled my progesterone for the following one so I went from doing because I did cyclogest pessaries and we went from doing two a day one in the morning one at night to four a day so I did two in the morning and two at night and we went to our consultation everything was sorted we changed that for our frozen transfer we actually did do down regulation which we didn't for our um, fresh transfer because we did a short protocol so we just did stims so for this one we did I believe I did like a month on just the pill then I did a week where I started bucerolin for downreg and also did a last week of the pill and then I stayed on bucerolin for four weeks before then going to start Pessaries and Prognova, like um, Estradol. So we started all that at the very end of September and all the medication beforehand, everything was fine at our baseline scans. And then we had our transfer on the 2nd of December. And I just felt a lot better this time round. I felt a lot happier. Um, I didn't feel... Because we were told about how none could freeze and it was very poor, not poor, but average quality eggs from the first one, like embryos, I left feeling like, oh, it's not going to happen. Whereas this time, we didn't have an issue with needing to change catheter at the transfer and everyone just seemed happier. So I left feeling a lot more upbeat. I started having odd twinges from sort of two days past transfer and that made me feel like it was going to be more positive anyway so then we went to I actually went to stay with my auntie in Birmingham because she's recently been diagnosed with cancer um I went to stay with her for a little bit and then I went to my best friend before coming home and we were meant to test on like the 12th of December if it was our official test day because our clinic do 10 days past so it works out as your like 14 or 15 days past ovulation if it was a natural cycle 
but we uh tested at seven i say we ben was with me i um tested at seven i'd done some training at work in the morning i'd come home with a cheese board and i was like oh, brie i love cheese and I was like, before I do, I'll test, because the advice is that you're to stay away from brie unless it's cooked. So I took a test and we had two little pink lines come up. And I was so happy to see two little pink lines. And I remember coming through to Ben holding it and like, there's two lines. And was so happy. Um sorry. <laughs> I'll cry more. Um yeah, we had our two lines. We rang our clinic and they said to test again in a week's time and let them know the outcome of the next test. I mean, I tested every single day after that. I'd never seen two lines before on a test of my own. Like in all five years really of not using anything and three and a half years of actively trying so i tested basically every day it cost me a lot of money on tests but the following week the lines had progressed really well we were still solid positives so we were booked in for a scan on the 3rd of january and we would have been seven weeks and two days at that uh, over Christmas I think it was around six weeks and then I started actually feeling like I was pregnant so about six weeks was when kind of nausea kicked in and tiredness like I suffer with fatigue anyway but pregnancy tiredness is a whole other level I just like could not keep my eyes open and the nausea I was never actually sick but I'd if I was hungry that like, I had to constantly eat if I hadn't eaten in like an hour, I just felt like I wanted to be sick. I'd wake up sometimes and run to the bathroom because it was that bad, but was never actually like fully sick. And so on the 3rd of January, we went for our seven week, two, two day scan at our IVF clinic. And I remember lying there and I couldn't see the screen because it was kind of turned to the sonographer, but Ben could just see it. And they turned it round to everything absolutely perfect and we had little baby richards little tiny thing on the screen but heartbeat you could see flashing away and um, she took all the measurements and we were like measuring perfectly on track we were measuring exactly how far we were so we were seven weeks two days little baby bean little baby Richards flashing away it was technically the sack and the fetal pool that could be seen in like a huge yolk sack um but everything was measuring exactly how it should have and so then we went away we were a lot of crying um went away from the scan and everything continued as normal still feeling sick still feeling horrible I knew personally that I wouldn't have made it to the 12 week NHS dating scan so we booked a private scan for 10 weeks and we went out because that was in Norwich so we went out for a meal beforehand and then we had our scan and I remember walking in and we've been in the car on the way in saying about how we because we should have been 10 weeks and a day 10 weeks one day I remember going in and saying like we couldn't wait to see the little arms fluttering about and it actually looking like a little baby now and I remember going in lying on the bed obviously for the sonographer and her trying to find baby with the um the scanner and she was like oh I can't baby seems to be a little bit small I can't quite see well enough um, do you mind just going to the bathroom and then we'll do a transvaginal scan instead? So then I was starting to worry a little bit because at the time where we were, you should have been able to find a baby should have been big enough for an abdominal scan. So I went to the bathroom, came back and then she obviously did the transvaginal scan and how they do it at the clinic 
not the clinic, but at the scan place there, is there's a curtain between you and the sonographer. And she'll find baby, she'll confirm the heartbeat, and then she'll turn it onto a TV screen for you. And I remember lying there for what feels like forever, and she still hadn't switched the screen on. And then I remember her pulling back the screen and saying the words, your baby has died, I'm sorry. And there's not much more that you can do at that point. I remember just breaking, breaking down and This is the first time I've, I mean, it's now March. Well, we're now the 25th of March, I want to say. And our scan was the 23rd of January. So two months have passed now. And this is the first time I'm actually speaking out loud. But, I sh yeah, I remember pulling the screen back and saying, I'm sorry, your baby has died. She took measurements of the baby and baby was measuring around nine weeks. She was like, about nine weeks, nine weeks in a day. So baby had passed away a week before and I'd had no, no indication that anything was wrong. We'd had no bleeding. I was still waking up feeling sick. Um, I remember she left the room, obviously to give me and Ben some time. And um, she also rang our local pregnancy unit to pass on our details to them because we hadn't had a scan at the hospital. So she passed everything over for us. And I remember just crying and crying and crying some more. And Ben doesn't drive, so I actually drive, drove us home and then just curled up in a ball in bed and cried. Um, our early pregnancy unit so was the following day and confirmed uh, the miscarriage and confirmed that baby's heart wasn't beating anymore and asked us what route we wanted to take for this. Um, she said we could either wait for my body to naturally miscarry because it's classed as a missed miscarriage or a silent miscarriage and my body hadn't yet registered it or tried to pass like um, the baby. So she said, do you want to do uh, naturally go home, do it? And I didn't. Uh, she asked if we wanted to do medical where we'd have, I, f I believe, but I didn't choose it. But I believe she said you have the pessaries first to soften the cervix. And you go home, you come back 24 hours later and have more medication to actually bring on um, the miscarriage. But then she said you'd stay in hospital until you'd passed it. And again, I didn't want to at this point. I just, I didn't want, I didn't feel like I was strong enough to naturally miscarry and physically go put myself through that and see it. So I chose option three, which was surgical. Um, Our hospital do surgical DNC procedures on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Obviously we went in on the Friday and the next available time to do it would have been the Monday but it was actually Ben's best friend's funeral on the Monday so we postponed and I said I can't do it on a Monday like it's already going to be hard enough for you so we chose to do it on a Wednesday and, and physically the procedure was fine um, but emotionally it was so hard like especially going into the hospital knowing that I was still carrying my baby. It might have been dead for two weeks, but I was still carrying it. But then knowing I was leaving completely without, it was hard. Um, I've struggled a lot with the miscarriage, like emotionally. And it's recently been Mother's Day in the UK, Sunday just gone, which was a lot harder than I thought it was going to be. Oh, 
Anyway, now um, we were waiting to contact for a consultation about using our final embryo that's in the freezer for another frozen transfer. However, currently, as I mentioned at the beginning, we're in quarantine. Currently, there is the outbreak of COVID-19, which the UK has just gone into as of technically yesterday. I've just gone into a sort of soft lockdown and all IVF clinics in the UK have been told to cancel all treatments. Um, nothing can continue past sort of the 15th of March. So we haven't actually had a consultation yet. They're debating whether we can have one over the phone without any face-to-face -face contact. But so far, we have no idea when we can try again. Um, I completely understand the reason and as to why they've stopped. I, I understand completely and agree with the reasons as to why. But it's very hard to accept that when you're waiting on something like a treatment or IVF and you already feel like everything might be against you to then not have any clue as to when you're going to be able to try again. So that's kind of where we are right now. I mean, we can try naturally, but with a very low percentage chance that it would happen. But we don't even know. Because Ben's came back low morphology after his multivitamins, we don't even know if we could naturally fall pregnant. Um, Because they never tested my tubes. So they might be fine, they might not. We don't know. Um. So that's kind of where we are now. I will try and include any pictures if I can, but I'm useless at this, hence why I'm using a phone. I just thought I'd pop on an update. So first first transfer was unsuccessful, which is kind of what was included in the video before. Second was successful with little baby Richards, but unfortunately we had a missed miscarriage at 10 weeks. And we have no idea when we're going to be trying again. <laughs>